Hello again, how are you doing today? I hope that you're well and that you are excited for Christmas. It's not long now. My granddad loved Christmas. I remember how his house would be decked out with Father Christmases and nativity sets and lots and lots of Christmas cards. He was wonderful and because of his love for Christmas, we decided to take him to the Metro Centre some years ago to see the lights and the displays. He was over 90 years old at the time and as I helped him from the car, I asked if he wanted me to get him a chair to wheel him around in, as it was such a big place. He told me that he had his walking stick, his cane, and that he would be fine. He was fine. He had an amazing day and his face was lit up with joy, just as much as the shopping centre was with, lit with bulbs. Today on Little Bear's journey, he comes across a cane, which helps him along the way. So let's go and find out more. The cane. On December the 15th, Benjamin opened the next door and found a cane. Sleepily and silently, the lamb and the little bear trudged on with only the hoot of an owl to break the silence. It grew colder. The howling of the wolves made them walk faster. The little bear was so discouraged. Why did he ever set out on this long journey, he wondered. Maybe you should quit and go home. Suddenly, a light pierced the fog. They walked towards it and stopped in front of a small hut. Smoke billowed from the chimney. The little bear knocked timidly on the door. Who is there? asked a woman. A lamb and a little bear on the way to Bethlehem. The woman opened the door and pointed to a table laden with food. I've been expecting you. Come in. Astonished, the little bear and the lamb sat down at the table and ate until they were full. They lay down by the fireplace and fell fast asleep. The next morning they could not find the woman to thank her, and as they stepped out of the door and looked back, the house disappeared. All that remained was a cane. The little bear gladly picked it up and continued on his journey. It's good the little bear didn't give up and go home, said Benjamin. Yes, agreed Mother Bear. Faith and courage can banish despair. So let's think about that as we head through the window to find our next piece in the Advent puzzle. Over two weeks now, we're more than halfway through. We're really accelerating down that track, ready to see the Bethlehem birth as it happens. We've put a number of characters into our scene. We're going to try another one today and see what's in the stocking. This is a young man praising. It's got again. He's got a dog with him. I think dogs are very popular in these things. But um, a young man praising, look, he's down on his knees praising. Sometimes kind of we're so awestruck by the enormity of God that we kind of can't contain it and we need to express, express it out to people. Sometimes like when you're so excited that something's happened in your life and you can't wait to tell your parents about it. Maybe something's happened at school, you've got a really good mark and you can't wait to tell your parents what the teacher said about you. That's what we're like with God. I'm so excited about God coming to earth. I love Christmas so much. That story of God deciding to become like us, to try and live a life that we live so that he can uh, understand us even better. That's what this man prays is just like I do. So we're going to pop him in. Number 15. Wow. There he goes, in down on his knees with his hands in the air. Don't forget to, uh, to, to thank God for, 
for the wonderful things that you've got in your life, to thank God for your parents or your, whoever looks after you, for your grandparents, for your brothers and sisters, and just to say thank you to God because that's a wonderful thing to do. And tomorrow we'll look at the next character. Do you have friends who help you, who give you advice? Do you know, my wife is really good at advice. She's always helping me by telling me how I could do things differently. Today's story is all about a bear who is looking for the most comfortable way to sleep. And the advice that he's given really helps him a lot. This is called A New Bed for Father Bear. One stormy autumn day, Cairo the rabbit was invited to Father Bear's. They wanted to have some raspberry leaf tea, hazelnut cakes and a little chat before the bear went off for his winter sleep. November, December, January, February, March, counted Cairo. Five months. I could never lie still for that long. What does your bed look like? Ah, the bed's back there. It's all ready for winter, rumbled the bear. As soon as it starts to snow, that's where I go and stay. He showed Caro his bedroom. What? You want to sleep in this prickly pile of straw? cried Caro, horrified. You can't be serious. Um, well, yes, stammered the bear, just a little embarrassed. Of course, the bed is a little bit ancient now, and not as beautiful as it once was, but it's ever so comfortable. Nonsense, said the rabbit. Nobody could possibly have a proper night's sleep in a bed like that. You simply have to go and get a new one. The following night, Father Bear really did sleep badly. The straw stuck on his bottom. The old bed rattled. There were flies buzzing around his ears and there was also a sort of smell. Funny that he'd never noticed all this before. Tomorrow morning, he said to himself, I shall go and get a new bed. Nobody could possibly have a proper night's sleep in a bed like this. After breakfast, <clears throat> Father Bear set out on his way. He came to a hollow in the forest and there he saw Wally Wild Boar, who was happily rolling around in a hollow. Hey, what are you staring at? grunted Wally irritably. Sorry, said Father Bear, but I'm looking for a new bed and wanted to see where you sleep. Here, of course, grunted Wally proudly, in my lovely bed of earth. You want to try it? Yes, please, rumbled Father Bear with eager curiosity, and he lay down next to Wally in a hollow. The wild boar's bed certainly smelled a bit funny, but lovely it was not. The damp earth was soggy. It was cold and uncomfortable, and when Father Bear got up, he was covered in dirt from head to foot. Super, eh, said Wally with delight, but best of all are the scented herbs at the side of the bed. They keep the flies away. Here, you can have a few to take with you. Thank you, mumbled Father Bear. He took the herbs and quickly went on his way. Ugh, what a horrible mess, he took, he grumbled, when he once he was out of earshot. He tried to knock the dirt out of his fur and then wandered onto the pond. There he met Frida Frog, who was having her breakfast. Hello, bear, she croaked. Why are you up and about so early? Um, well, I need a new bed for my winter sleep, rumbled Father Bear. Oh, really? Then you simply must come and see where I sleep, gushed Frida. Come on. Father Bear waded to the water with Frida until they reached a clearing amongst the weed reeds. This is my water bed, she said. You simply lie down, take a deep, deep breath in and out and sink softly down to the bottom of the pond. You'll sleep like a log. Look, like this. Father Bear obediently lay down next to Frida and took a deep breath. But instead of sinking, he stayed floating on the surface like a big, hairy airbed. A water glug glug is really nice, glugged Father Bear, but it's not the right glug for me. He scrambled to his feet and waded back to dry land. 
Lucky for me that I've warmed myself up with a lot of winter fat, thought Father Bear as he went on his way. Otherwise, I'd catch a cold from that freezing pond water. But at least I'm clean again. With a yawn, he wandered along in the direction of the village. And there, on top of an old barn, he saw the biggest nest he had ever seen. A large black and white bird was standing in it, chattering it away. Hello, said Father Bear. Are there any eggs up there? No, my children hatched and flew away long ago, said Sally Stork. I'm getting ready for takeoff myself, as well as it happens. It's not a nest anymore, just a bed. Oh, well, I happen to be looking for a new bed myself, said Father Bear. Do you mind if I take a look? Of course not. Come on up, said the stork with a puff and a pant. Father Bear climbed onto the roof and sat down in the stork's nest. It was lovely, homely, comfy and as soft as feathers. But unlike his den, it didn't have a roof. Every snowflake and every gust of wind would come straight in. That's true, said Sally. That's why we all fly south in the winter. But I've got a bag full of warm feathers. Would you like them? Yes, please, rumbled Father Bear. He put Sally's feathers with Wally's herbs, cautiously climbed down from the roof and made his way back to his den. Father Bear was extremely tired. All he wanted to do was lie down, even though it was only midday. But where should he lie, in that horrible straw mess with the flies buzzing around? Thoughtfully, he stood in front of his bed. Then he reached down into it and pulled and pushed, till it was round as the stork's nest. Next he padded it with Sally's soft feathers. And after that he put Wally's scented herbs in a vase, and looked on contentedly as the flies buzzed off at top speed. Finally he lay down and took a deep, deep breath in and out as Frida had told him to. Outside, the first snowflakes came dancing down from the sky to cover the world and Father Bear lay hibernating in the shelter of his den, snoring loudly in his comfy straw bed like a wild boar, a frog, a stork? No, like a bear. Sometimes we think we have to do things the way we have always done them, or that the way other people do things is strange or weird. If today's story teaches us anything, it's that we can take a little bit of advice from many people and make it work for us. Never think that you can have that you have all the answers and can't learn anything new. My granddad, even in his 90s, was still learning, as am I, as are your parents. I wonder what Christmas will teach us this year. Sleep tight and God bless.